Hello and welcome back. Last Thursday I was checking out a Facebook marketplace listing for a friend and I don't normally go on there or, or even look on there because I'm always tempted to buy things. And of course I came, in, came across a listing for 26 radios, two multimeters and a valve tester. Now that was too big a temptation for me and I went down there on Thursday night and uh, I bought the lot and he threw in a few extra radios as well which are pretty much junk but at least two of them I can use for parts and I'm actually looking for the part for some of those parts so that was a, an absolute boon and bonus just to make matters even better so far I've tested 17 of them I think and 16 of them work not very well some of them and they do need some work but yeah just incredible and there's a couple of really big old Phillips things which I expected to be dead and they work just off the bat um, yeah so I haven't actually videoed all the testing I have videoed a few of them though especially the last one which doesn't work it, which is where I've decided to stop for the time being and I'll leave the rest of them out in the garage and wherever else I've been to put them because there's a lot of radios and some of them are absolutely huge uh, so yeah so this is a little bit of the testing I've done there's some actually pretty good radios in there I've already uh, tested about 15 of them and they've all worked so far and I've recapped two of them already and it's only Saturday afternoon so I decide to stick my neck out and bring one of these bigger ones in there's about a oh, half dozen or so very large radios and this is a Philips 3326 a according to what's been written on the back I'm not sure that's the original back I can't turn it around because it's so huge uh, definitely doesn't look like the original back but it's really in very nice condition. The Bakelite is absolutely beautiful on it. So these were made from 1942 up until about 1947 or something like that. They're when they modernised their range. Post-war. Um, I haven't plugged this one in or tried it or anything like that. It's just come straight in. Now, I'm taking a big gamble on, on this one because if it's like any other Philips radio that I've owned, the oscillator won't work. So, let's plug it in. I don't have a valve dim bulb at the moment or a current limiting bulb. Uh, because I was fixing the Marantz amplifier and that sort of killed it and the little electronic meter I've got so I'm just going straight through the isolation transformer and the variac now I'll be truly amazed if this fires up because as I said all the other large Philips ones from this era which I've bought over the years to add to my collection uh, the oscillator have hasn't been working in them right let's bring it up very very slowly and carefully so it's on around about 40 volts at the moment can't see any smoke or anything. 60. Uh, 
Now, it is missing its... Um, I'm not sure what it is. It's it something which, um, anyway, it has the a clear um, celluloid is what I'm looking for. A celluloid which goes over this and underneath the the dials and that has the markings on it. And that seems to be the band switch. I doubt this has got a power switch on it. So the variac is about halfway. I can hear a hum actually. Let's see if I can. There's no aerial wire hanging out the back. Okay. So it's got sockets for the aerial. Right, so let's go up a little bit higher. I can hear crackles. Jeez. Where's the tuning lever or whatever you call it? it? Doesn't have a dial pointer on it. I can't, at least I can't see one. through the band so that's tone and that's volume it doesn't seem to be okay I'm going to bring it up to about 220 volts it's only on, on 180 volts. Wow. I think the dial is not working. There's actually two of these. It's got a beautiful glass on it. Bring you over to the, um, the top camera. So you can see the dial glass on it. Well, it's definitely doing something. What I might do is just pause this for a moment, take the back off it, and then I'll see if I can manually tune it. Okay, so the first thing I've noticed is this lamp having fallen out and it just goes up in there and that indicates the when shortwave is on. Uh, there is a dial lamp here. 
don't know why it, quite why it's down there though um, I would have thought it worked better up here but yeah maybe yeah maybe this is a war set um, here is the dial cord so it definitely needs restringing so let's fire it up again it does have like a maybe a phono input or something like that there although there's only I oh know there's two wires to attach to that so this looks like an excellent candidate for a Bluetooth uh, adapter well that one dial light works so we can turn this Wow, it just works. And it sounds like it needs a, a recap. It's got a new um, output transformer on it. It's got the original cloth over the uh, speaker which is pretty amazing this might be a keeper actually depending on how good the other one is let's see if it'll pick up and the aerial's not pointing in the right direction here ah well, that's interesting. The dial pointer is actually moving. You can see that. It's at just at the very, very top of the picture. This is quite stiff. Let's see where the 3LO is on this dial. So it's back there. Okay. can just hear it yeah needs a good clean up this radio all right 
little idea you go and get the other one. Yeah, the controls are very stiff and everything like that. But yeah, we'll just see if this light lights for the short wave. No. Looks like the bulb is blown. All right. Does smell of burning dust. It's pretty filthy inside. Yeah. Obviously, I'll need a, a new cord and all that sort of thing. I'm not quite sure what this does. It's got a spring on the end of it and... Yeah. Okay. So, excuse me, um, 16 out of 16 radios so far. I've never had such a hit rate. I know there's quite a few broken ones. So I'm going to um, get the other radio, I guess, and we'll try that. Here's the other one, and it seems to have a magic eye in it. If I go across the other camera... Yeah, up up there. On the other one, it has a Phillips symbol there. And actually, it might just be a variation of the dial glass and positioning of the shortwave light. So this one doesn't have the light there. But if we have a, a magic eye in there, that would be pretty unusual for an Australian radio. So far, I've only come across about five or six. This one looks like it's been... This is definitely not Philips um, cloth, although it's quite nice. It obviously doesn't have the Philips uh, knobs on it. Not quite as nice as the other one. It's got a few marks on it up top here in the top right hand corner of your picture. Turn it around, it doesn't have a back this one. And we'll fire it up and see if this one works as well. This might be the earlier model, the 3326. And the other one is a 3326A. So this one might be a bit earlier. Uh, I've just looked on Radio Museum and looked closely at the dial pictures. And yeah, they're different. So this one seems to be the earlier one. But we'll plug it in and we'll see what happens. Okay, I was wrong. This one is a 2262. Has the same sort of layout. Now, it does have a magic eye up there. So I really, really doubt that'll work. It would be great if it did. Also, the volume control is well and truly um, stuck. So I don't know whether it's going to blast us out or anything like that but we'll try it anyway about 40 volts yep and the pilot light just lit up yep as you can see there so we have a good transformer at least I'm not being too careful with these because they have to be worked on anyway. Now, right, so let's take it up a bit more. Now we're at a hundred volts. Beginning to hear just a smidgen of noise. Uh, 
are about 140 volts. We'll stick an aerial on it while the caps are reforming a little bit. This is going to come off. So we'll just put a thing on there. It's going to be loose, but Sounds like we have a field coil and an output transformer. A little bit of static, and we're at uh, 200, no, um, 180 volts. Wow, that's 200 volts. This is definitely needs new filter caps at the very, very least. Yes, and this has got the older style or even older style um, tuning gain. seems to be jammed up. I can't turn this one because of the dial cord arrangement. Oh no. Yep. And it's working. Not very well, but it is working. Wow. Okay. Don't suppose we have a magic eye, do we? No. Looks as dead as a donut. Do uh, dead as a donut? Uh, donut? <laughs> uh, dead as a dodo. Yeah. Okay. This looks pretty original, actually. It doesn't look like the top's been messed with. It obviously has a new power cord on it and it's probably even been worked on underneath. Okay, let's turn it off. Right. So what's that? 17, 18 out of 18 radios working? Oh, I can't type. 
don't believe this. It's absolutely incredible. Okay, I'm going to, yeah, start work on a couple of these. Yeah, there's a few British uh, pies out there. And there's a monster one, which is perhaps three, four, probably four times as big as this, because it's so, well, yeah, it's twice as high and twice as long. It's a monster. Uh, but the cabinet on that is pretty bad. I'll see if I can get it working basically. And if it does work, I'll make a decision on whether I want to do the cabinet or not. I'm still not sure what this does. This little spring on here. It's very unusual. Right, we'll leave it there. And I'm going to go off and have some dinner because it's six o'clock. And it's only Saturday, so still got another six days to decide which radio we want to do. So I might put a poll out and ask your opinion.